We were wondering if it had a turbo or not. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, before we start this video, I would like to say uh, we appreciate everyone who watches, comments, likes, shares. Uh, we just hit 30,000 subscribers, so that's like a super big milestone for us. Uh, we hope to get many more of you guys watching. And uh, we absolutely love the fact that people out there are interested in the stuff that we do and actually like it and enjoy our content. And so without any more further talking, let's jump right into this build. So we, we decided, Nate and I, as a team, that we are going to pull out the dashboard uh, simply because we want to do the job right. And as you can see, there is a big gaping hole right here in the inner structure, which means that that part of the inner structure will need to be replaced. And to do a really good, solid, professional job, we will have to pull out this dashboard. That will mitigate any kind of damage to the dashboard. And also it will allow us to finish the panel from the inside. That way it doesn't rust and doesn't leak and stuff like that. So. Uh, Nate is going to pull the dashboard while I start pulling on the metal. Wait, how come you get the easy part? I bet I'll pull this out and you pull the dashboard out and, I, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'll pull this out. And yeah, you pull it. I think. <laughs> uh, and then dad, dad is going to run down to Bo Hannon's and he is going to get this little section right here. Wait, hold up. Is that is that hidden damage? Hidden damage? No way, hidden click damage. Bait, click bait thumbnail coming right up. Yes sir. <laughs> yes sir. Uh, so we're gonna replace this section as well. Some people would just go ahead and straighten that because you're never going to really see it, but not at 23rd Garage. Here we try to be as professional as possible. We don't see it when, when they bring it to us because the gaps ain't right. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've had a lot of things that we've had to replace and repair after other people did it. Yeah, remember and that wooden frame rail? <laughs> two by four, two two by not even a four by four, but two two by fours. Uh, no, but I'm not saying that we're like the best or like we're like super pros or something. But we try our best to do the job right. So to do the job right, that needs to go. That needs to go. And in my semi-professional opinion, this needs to go too. Because if you look right here, we've got a pretty good bit of damage right here. And then to access this uh, door post here, uh, this needs to come off. Now, usually what most people would do or like what I've done in the past is simply like uh, drill this out and either bend it out or cut it off and then stitch it back on. Obviously, that's not the best route to take. If you wanna do a really good job and make the car worth some decent amount of money, uh, you would need to replace that. So I'm trying to talk dad into getting this piece as well. Hopefully he will do that. If not, I will straighten it out, uh, which is not a big deal, but you know, it's always best to replace it. If it's bent, replace it. That's that's just, that's my model. Bro, I just like to- their helicopter outside? That's probably Heavy D in his uh, Black Hawk. What yeah. do you guys think about that? Do you guys watch Heavy D Sparks? Anybody? I know somebody out there watches Heavy D. I absolutely love that channel. I'm, I'm a big fan. Mr. Heavy D, huge fan. Love your channel. Anyways, uh, so let's get to work. Let's get cracking. Check that out, I got the door post all pulled out and I'm very happy with the fact that I was able to strategically place one mo clamp and make one pull and get it all pulled out and ready to cut. So uh, while Nate is removing the dashboard, I am going to move on over here to the front and uh, pull out this upper apron right here. We just need to put a clamp right here and tweak it probably just a little bit up and over, just a hair, but I'm thinking I might weld onto this piece right here and slick pull right here first, just to see what it's going to do. I know that this piece is probably just going to tear, but uh, it needs to come out anyways, because it needs to be replaced. So hopefully uh, this right here, uh, this pulling this right here and pulling this a little bit will tweak all that back into place and we will be good. And I'm also noticing that this is right here kind of jammed in. So I'm really hoping that dad gets this piece because if he doesn't, I'm gonna have to straighten a lot of stuff out under there. And you guys know, I don't like straightening stuff. I like to just remove it and replace it. I'm a, I'm a R and R mechanic, remove, replace only.
I've Nate got that entire dashboard out in what seemed to me like minutes. And I am very impressed, I'm very happy. You guys don't even know how much I appreciate Nate. And I hope you guys do too, because he does a lot of work behind the camera and he does a lot of work throughout all the processes and stuff. And that's actually very hard to do. So drop your love in the comment section below, you know, type something like Nate's the goat. I don't know, something cool. Uh, but moving right along, we are going to go ahead and remove uh, the spot welds here and uh, start removing this outer skin section here to see how bad the damage is underneath. And it's gonna be really nice to be working without that dashboard in there because now we have access in from behind. We can move all this highly flammable material right here and won't catch anything on fire. And if something does happen to catch on fire, it's gonna be very easy to put out, you know? Yes, sir. So that's, that's you know, dad was kind of skeptical about us pulling the dash, but he ain't even back yet and the dash is out. You know, so huge props to Nate on that. And now we're going to go ahead and start removing stuff. As you can see right here, I did pull out this section right here. It came out fairly decent. Uh, it did tear because it's just a very thin piece of metal. And I knew that was gonna happen, but it needs to come off anyway. So uh, we also need to take the hood off and take the other side fender off. That way we can measure the square on this upper apron and figure out exactly where we need to put that. So we've been cranking on this thing, cranked right through lunchtime. Uh, but we've got this little section right here off and Nate has removed the skin on this side. And as you guys can see, this inner structure is just all beat up. So it definitely has to come off. And also right here, I'm gonna have to do a couple of little pulls right here where as you can see, it's separated here. So there was really no way to pull this together with that. But once we get this removed, this will be a very easy pull. Uh, just do a side clamp and pull it out, which should not be a big deal. But yeah, it's coming along right nice. And right here, we just need to separate all these spot welds and remove them. And if it looks like it's kind of a rough removal, uh, it usually is. It's simply because we just, we kind of grew up doing it this way. And I will give you one piece of advice. If you ever want to get into this business, if for some reason you go crazy and decide to quit school and want to do cars, make sure that you learn <laughs> how to do everything the best way possible from the start. Because once you build bad habits, you just, you can't get away from them. Uh, so you need patience, you need skills, you need knowledge. So you have to find somebody that does it the right way and uh, learn from them. So you learn it once and you use it for the rest of your life. But uh, I think it's going to turn out absolutely perfect in the end. And I know you guys will be happy with it. I know dad's gonna be happy with it. So uh, we're gonna go eat some lunch real quick and we'll be right back on this thing. It has been over here just cranking. You know, I almost I, I almost feel like I'm about to retire and they's just gonna start doing all the framework. You know, I won't have to do anything. I'll just uh, sit back, relax, and watch the money roll in. 
What do you think, Nate? You yeah, like that I idea? I don't know about no money rolling in with this with this kind of job. <laughs> what you got left here? Explain to us what you've done here, sir. I just pulled off the inner structure. I, yes, yes, I see. I mean, since there was a big hole here, I kind of just cut it in half. That way I could work with the bottom and top separately. So we need to remove this? Yeah, and that, that's ready to remove pretty much. Just got to cut these little corners right here and it'll come off. And while Nate was doing all that, I went ahead and drilled out our donor piece. Look at these. I want you to uh, direct your attention to these beautifully drilled holes here. Expertly drilled. So you guys don't know that I'm an expert at drilling holes. But we've got it all removed, taken apart, and ready to go on. Let's uh, do a little mock-up. Look at that, Mike. Look at that. Hey, you know what? We could just go ahead and weld this on. Where are you going to bolt the doors to? Well, we'll just turn them into suicide doors. You know, we'll just make the hinges on that side. Put the hinges on that side, it's gonna look like a Bentley. Is it a Bentley that has doors like that? They, I don't know. What, what, what car has doors that open up? Is it a Bentley? Or Rolls, Rolls Royce? I don't know. I don't know nothing. Anything, anything about about $25,000, I know nothing about. Anyways, uh, this is looking really good. Uh, so basically, as you guys can see, we've marked it here so that we don't accidentally cut off too much. Definitely don't wanna cut off too much. And uh, since the skin here is simply cosmetic, it's not structural at all in this area, uh, we don't have to do like a really crazy overlap. Like if this was a frame rail, we'd have to overlap it, blah, blah, blah. But this skin serves no structural purpose. It's literally there just to make it look good. All the structure is right here in this stuff. And like this right here is really hard. When you hit it with a hammer, the hammer just bounces right back into your face. You, you don't just dent this stuff right here. What kind of steel is this, Nate? You know. Um, high strength. Is it high? Yeah, is that what it's high called? High strength steel. High strength steel. See, the cars are like the, the inner structures and the skins, they're made from two different types of steel. This steel right here is really hard to drill through. It's really hard to dent and damage, hard to tear. And then the skin is actually really soft. It's really easy to chew through and it's a lot thinner. So uh, like I said, it's not really structural. So we don't have to really worry about crazy overlaps. We just have to make sure that we put the proper gussets in here and line it up real good and do some really nice penetrating welds. And that will be good to go. And uh, it's looking good so far, Nate. I like the way you took all this off without drilling any holes through it, without tearing it up. Very nice, sir. You'll be, you'll be a master framer before long, and I'll be a master retired man. All right, so uh, I've got my I've got my door post cut out, and I used the old one as a template. But the fact that the old one was so mangled up and such a short piece that I was not able to get a very accurate uh, template. So if you look right here, you can see that we have a bit of differentiation going on, and that simply means that there is more trimming to do, which is not a bad thing at all because you would much rather cut more meat off than not have enough, you know? You always, you always want to cut a little bit less than you need to cut, that way you can just trim it because it's easier to trim than to add. So here's what I wanna do. I want to get some self-tapper screws, screw this thing onto the car, and then hang the door on it. And just to see, just to get a rough idea of where it's at, because what we wanna do is we want to uh, weld this piece in with the door on the car uh, because that will give us an exact measurement or an exact placement for the pillar. And then also, if you look right here, we have to do a bit more pulling. 
right here from the back. So we'll have to pull this flange right here out, this flange, and then this little section right here. Uh, it's not that much pulling, uh, so it's not like, it's not gonna be like crazy hard to do. So I'm not too worried about it. And then this right here will need to be straightened out. I don't feel like replacing that. And then uh, we'll be ready to weld it up and put the skin on it and then move on to this part, which is a whole nother job in its Got the a pillar welded on well the inner structure of the a pillar as you guys can see i've got some nice little beads up here on top and uh i try to keep it, all these welds as flat as possible just to minimize grinding now it's time to go ahead and fit our outer skin this is the cosmetic part of this area and as you can see i need to trim it right here so what i've done is i have used my uh marking tool and I've marked it and I am going to go ahead and cut it to fit. That way we can fit it all up real nice, seam it all up and get it welded. And then we will move on to the upper apron skin here and then the little side piece and the piece of the core support and uh, we will be done. All right, so I got the skin welded on. Uh, got a nice little bead up here at the top. Got all the spot welds done. So we are now ready to move on to the upper apron. But I'm not even gonna lie, I'm kind of burned out. I might, I might just make Nate do all this. You sure you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. I'm. You sure you want to do that? What are you saying, that? I don't want to stop y'all, but I don't trust nobody. I need my Nova paint. Your Nova? Yeah, real. I got it. Yeah, I got enough neeks, pings, and beams on it, and two rust spots. I got to get out. They drive. Yeah. I had scratched it right here, and it was down to the white primer that was up under it, and I scratched it right there. So I just did that touch up, but. This right here is getting on my nerves. It done got too far gone. That's where that battery came over? Yeah, in. that's where the battery came over, right there. But uh, he shot that right there and he, he was saying, man, it's amazing for, for 20 years. I said, I got out of the paint shop in 2000. It's when I got this car in the paint shop. It held up really good. Real good. And he painted, and I had this painted and this painted. The ring I had this painted, I messed it up when I put the engine in. I scratched it real bad. So I got a spot right here. Oh yeah. That's just from hood lining up. Did you know this was when that storm hit and it was said that the garage, what happened to, you know, I keep them down there. Both of them, it's 64. Yeah. It fell on both of them. And me and Red took them to the shop. I mean, took them to my house because we didn't want them to flood. And I didn't want to put them in the garage because I had to pull one in one way and the other in another way so I can get in and out of them. 
And I said, well, we're just, they soaking wet. We'll just leave them here. Man, we got back home and lady, my neighbor called me and said, well, my burger law was going off. She said, tree fell in your yard. My, my tree fell in your yard. I came over there a minute. You couldn't even see these cars, neither one of them. Dang, it could have been yeah. a whole lot worse. Oh, what you talking about? Both doors was open. So I figured it had missed mine up real bad. He uh he cut everything out in there and put a latches from a Nissan uh, Sentra in there. Yeah. That thing closes like a new car. <laughs> I sold my van. Did the chop? Yeah, the chop van. Really? Why? I did yeah. the same thing. I took it to the paint body shop. Dude kept it for about three months, which was good. I wanted it pearl white. He painted it pearl white. Did you ever see it when it was white? It, yeah. Looked it good. It really good. He sealed my sunroof and put popper doors on it. Nitty masked me. Sealed up the sunroof? Sealed up, because he said the sunroof was leaking. I said, man, I ain't got no air conditioning on this thing. So Why do you think do you I put it there? I mean, it won't open. Oh, so he glued it? Yeah. Glued it shut. Glued it shut. That pissed me off, and then he took my door handles off and put them little poppers right here. Tell me, I thought you'd like that. And I was so mad at him, he just don't. I didn't how, pay him. How you open the doors? You have to hit them right here. And if the battery dies, you can't get in it. <laughs> I th and the first week I had it, I was getting it back. And I was over there working on it. And I got stuck on the inside. Are he, you serious? He didn't have the wire, the ground wire. He had ground wire just screwed into the door yeah. and, then, and then knocked the paint off. Oh my God. I finally got out of it. Took the, I said, I called him at first and I was mad. Then I said, no, nah, I got to figure out how these things work in case it happened to me again. So I opened, found it out, chased the wires down, and that ground wire was doing just like that. So I filed it, sanded it down, put a set screw in it, and then gave me Man. no more trouble, but I can't stand that. He about put you on the news. Yeah, because you'd be, th <laughs> you be working on it, then all of a sudden you shut the door, you got, shit, I got to walk back around here. <laughs> And I was gonna move them to round them, is what I was gonna do, but That's dude, and so he shaved the handles. Shaved them completely off. No dough handles. Look good, but that ain't what I wanted. I never even mentioned how, that. How do you do that much work? Right. And he didn't get paid a dime. I I would be trying to talk you out of doing it. <laughs> so that's too much work. <laughs> the doors were working fine. But that's like me. If I bring you my car and I come back and you paint it, well, I decided to paint it orange. What you mean you tried to paint it on? <laughs> That's me when I was 17 years old. Wait, is that this car? That's this car. <laughs> really? You that, got it? That's my uh, grandparents' house. That's my first apartment. That's my parents' house. Dang. That's how, how long I had this car. I had it when I was in high school. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a situation yesterday. Ben called me and he was like, yo, can you come help me on the Mustang? Doing some sick wide body flares. So I put all my welding equipment into the car, went down there, did whatever we had to do, went home. This morning, dad's like, hey, can you drive one of my cars to the shop? And I did. <laughs> and so my helmet, my Miller gloves, and my jacket in the trunk of my car right now half an hour away so what are we gonna do nate borrow one from jake maybe no you can just use your fate like your hand over <laughs> your eyeball i thought about using my little torch goggles you know my garage bound goggles and uh you know it'd give me a nice donald trump tan so i, I was thinking about doing it but uh I, I think we're just gonna go borrow one from uncle mike uncle mike's right up the road you know whenever we need something we go down there and we borrow it Still gotta, gotta give him his torch back. Have not given him his torch back yet. <laughs> hey! Hey! Yo! What is that? Sir! Sir! We finna go fishing. Sir, is this legal? <laughs> Dang, where'd you get this? Carolina, North Carolina. I can smell the catfish. Carolina Skiffer. I can smell the catfish. <laughs> I was hoping there's not gonna be no damage, but it's a it's like a hundred dollar manifold. See that? It's cracked. Oh cracked yeah. Right there, I just gotta change that. That's about it on the engine. Whoever stole the speakers, we want them back, and we want the fish finder. <laughs>
I love these center console books. I know, man. it's sick. You put this on Chickamauga, they finna think you're the police. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we, you know we gonna put some blue lights in it? Yeah, on the top. This thing's gonna clean right up. Oh, yeah. yeah you press just like we are. Dang, hey, at least the steering works. That's yeah. the most important part right there, man. Alignment, yeah. Steering, look at that. Just, yeah. Oh, dang, live wheel. Yeah, nice. Okay, live wheel. Live wheels everywhere. Hey, I wonder if there's any fish in it. We're gonna keep one for ice and fish, and the other one for, you know, like soft drinks and juices. No, not when I get on the boat. <laughs> By what? Is it auto darkening? No? I don't know, man. It's not. It probably isn't. It's just a helmet. It's just a helmet. Hey, it's better than better nothing. Than I'm thankful. I don't want to drive all the way home. <laughs> what if I just drive with this thing on my head? You might wreck. Hey, right, buddy, buddy, you don't know me, man. I've got, I've got extraterrestrial senses. All right, so I finally, finally got everything welded. And uh, I have to say, as much as I appreciate Uncle Mike and Jake for allowing us to use this hood, this was one of the hardest experiences welding ever. It has been, it has probably been over 15 years since I used a helmet that was not auto darkening. Like this was it, it, just as bad as I remember it. I don't know how they do it, but uh, I think I think I'm going to for Christmas. I'm going to buy Jake a uh, an auto darkening helmet. So Jake or Mike, who does the welding over there? I should probably give it to Jake because if I give it to Mike, he's probably going to sell it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I I'm going to give it to Mike's body shop. How about that? So a uh, little surprise for them, you know. This Christmas, I'm going to get them a a nice auto darkening helmet because this right here is just uh it's very hard you have to you literally have to put it on then you have to get your pistol and you have to put it right on the spot weld and then you got to do this number right here and then you got to lift it back up see with my helmet i can keep it down and i can weld you know if everything's lined up i can weld you know couple of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spot welds if I wanted to without lifting it because you can see. Uh, once the lens gets all crusty and stuff, obviously you have to replace it, but still it's better than this. Uh, but anyways, it's, it's looking really good. If you take a look here, you can see that we have our lower apron support all welded up real nice. We've got our upper apron support welded up real nice. We've got our new fender bracket here welded up and uh, yeah, it's looking really good. I'm very happy with how it turned out. And uh, it's Friday and I'm burned out. I'm burned up and uh, I don't feel like hanging these parts. I really don't, unless Nate wants to. Nate, you want to? Hang what parts? Like the hood, the fender. The That's door. too much work, man. That's a Monday type job. That's right what there. I was thinking, man. Like, I woke up this morning. I didn't even want to go to work. I didn't, Look, I didn't even do my hair. 
Still looking good. Thank you very much. But uh, dad got something new today. Let's go check that out. What is this? Oh, it's a Volvo. A Volvo, mate. Hey, aren't these made in Switzerland? I have no idea where they're made. T5. Means he's got five turbos. T5 inscription. I wonder what that means. Hey, leather. Leather. Ha! Look at all these beautiful lines that the insurance company made with all the parts. Yeah, see, that, that's one thing I hate about the insurance companies, man. They'll just jam all the extra parts or all the stuff that they take off the front right directly into the side of the car. And if you have leather seats like that, that's normally what it ends up looking like. Hey, we don't need no electrical work. Wow. What's wrong with the taco? I need a hair. Hey. What? Raw country. Rough country? Lift. Oh, you want to lift? Yeah. Yeah? We can do it. What's it? What is Paul talking about? Oh, so what's the problem? No, it doesn't plug up? Yeah, look at this. This is an HID. That's Ooh. got like five plugs. This got one. Man, it's tried to upgrade. Did you not give him the VIN number? No, I buy it from the, the Toyota dealer. Still Toyota dealer. I get in a VIN, they text me back. They what? call me back. They say, hey, and the part kind of not going to fix. <laughs> it's kind of not going to fit. It, it'll fit, but it's kind of <laughs> not going to fit. <laughs> Hey, it's going to fit, but it's kind of not going to work. In. Ouija over here distracting us from this beautiful Volvo. Oh! Trying to cut me. Why does that look like like a Chevy motor? Dang, look. We got a mini turbocharger. <laughs> hey, look how big this hood is. <laughs> I was like, why is it so heavy? Why is it not staying up? That was a fire department right there, man. No, I don't know who did that. That was the shop that did that. But look at this thing. It's not even hurt, bro. It ain't even hurt, man. That's it? That's the only issue? The, I, actually, this isn't even the issue. The issue is going to be getting parts for this thing. Oh, yeah, it's got a turbo. So it does have a turbo. Okay, okay. We were wondering if it had a turbo or not. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. So uh, let us know. Let us know if you guys would like to see this thing rebuilt. I don't think that's okay, going to be a lot of work, okay. but you know, still would be an interesting transformation, nonetheless. I think just washing this thing would be satisfying to see. You know, look how dirty it is. Dude, this thing's been detailed. What are you talking about? Dang! Uh, I see about. It looked like Ouija detailed it. <laughs> We got to take this off, man. We got to be honest around here. Oh, I got an idea. Only Ouija will pay $50,000 for a truck and then want to replace the headlights. 40,000. Okay, 40,000. But you know, by the time you're done with fees, taxes, and dealing with the dealer, you, you spent 50 grand. We have some very good news today. Very good news. I'm sure you can already guess what it is. Bam, look at that. You see that knob sticking out? You always want the knob to stick straight up like that. You want it nice and solid. Boom. Look at that. Boom. Man, that is... Mustan. You see that this, look. Ah, it's a sensor. It's not a sensor. This right here is pops out. Open the door. Or it pops in. Yeah, Mike bought it. You see this is locking right now. In an accident, it goes out and the steering wheel goes in. There we go. Very nice. Hey, go stick it back in there, Yuri. I'm gonna shove it back in there. for the driver's side airbag and the possible causes are clock spring airbag uh wires to the airbag or srs module 
uh, since we know that the SRS module was giving us codes for, uh, you know, that little squib that's under there and the seat belt. Uh, and then when we replace, when we got those reset and replaced that, those went away. So I know the SRS module is working. I know that the clock spring is working. I just tested it. All the steering wheel controls work. The horn works. Uh, we need to take this airbag off. And I know that these two holes have something to do with it coming off, but I can't get it in there and do it. So I'm gonna have to watch some YouTube videos and get that done. But honestly, I, I think this is just a job for Monday uh, because it's Friday and I'm already burned out from the other car and uh, got a bunch of other stuff going on. So I need a break and uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video guys. So if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. And uh, if you wanna continue to see what we're up to, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.